Hello there, Dr. Bill Crawford here, psychologist, speaker, author of eight books, host of two PBS specials, here again to bring you another tip on how to help you create the life you want. Specifically, how to use my life from the top of the mind philosophy to bring more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. Today I want to look at the subject of anxiety, especially intense anxiety. This is not about just being a little anxious. This is about when anxiety kind of stops us from being able to get things done, gets in our way, or affects our life in a really negative way. Because a lot of times people go, well, yeah, anxiety, you know, you should just don't worry, be happy. Just think positive thoughts. Put a big old smile on your face. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Have you noticed? That isn't very helpful. If you're the person feeling anxiety, you rarely say, oh, thank you for sharing. I feel so much better now. And if you're the person trying to help someone with anxiety, they don't really like it when you kind of minimize that experience. So what I've come up with are what I call five new steps on dealing with intense anxiety. This actually came from my work with a client who was dealing with a breakup. And it wasn't her idea. And so you know how hard that can be sometimes when, when things happen and we're dealing with all that kind of uh, grief and rejection and things like that. And we came up with a five-step process that she reported being very, very, very helpful. And since then, she's actually kind of shared this process with other people around anxiety. And they have said it was a successful as well. So I thought I would share it with you in case either you know somebody or you were someone who's dealing with really intense anxiety. The first step in this process is to acknowledge that the pain of anxiety is real. This is not something you're imagining. This is not your failure to cope. Uh, they, there's a lot of studies that talk about the pain of physical pain and the pain of anxiety, emotional pain, occupy many of the same brain circuits. So this is really real pain. This is not something that somehow you're just making up. So you want to acknowledge the pain as real. Step number two is to separate out the pain of anxiety from this sense of who we are, um, some sort of sense of our failure to cope, some sort of sense of we're not enough in some ways. Because a lot of times when we feel anxious, the idea is we're just not doing it right. We're not thinking right. Or we should, again, put a big old smile on our face and everything will be fine. We start questioning ourselves. That self-doubt starts creeping in and that makes the anxiety worse. Those of you who follow my life from the top of the mind philosophy, you know why this is. Because when we feel anxious and start to doubt ourselves, what that really is is kind of data being sent to this lower 20% of the brain. Which really speaks to step three. Make, give anxiety a meaning. Give it a reason for being there. Intense anxiety is beneficial when we need to either fight something or run away from it. It is a trigger for a fight or flight response. It's a trigger for reacting without thinking in a way because we are in a dangerous situation. So it triggers chemicals, adrenaline, noradrenaline, and cortisol that are really designed to put us into that fight or flight mode. If someone's coming at us with a gun or a knife or a big old, you know, mean look on their face, that triggers the anxiety. We can go into fight or flight. That's the good news. That's what it's for. But when we're kind of experiencing this generalized anxiety or it's about some situation that makes us doubt our own self-worth, we've got to separate out the, the pain of the anxiety from this sense of who we are. It isn't a statement about our failure to cope. It isn't about who we are. So we want to give it meaning. It is actually a signal that something needs to change. There is a quote in my book, Life from the Top of the Mind, that says stress or anxiety is a signal something needs to change. Suffering is when we don't make the change. If we can recognize our anxiety as a valuable signal, we're being thrown into a part of the brain that's perfect for fight or flight, but we may not be in a situation where fight or flight is exactly what we want to or can do, and therefore anxiety, while it's understandable, isn't serving us. But it is a signal something needs to change. So what needs to change? What we need to do is begin to identify who we are separate from this anxiety. So what I encourage my clients to do when I'm working with them is come up with a list of 20 qualities or characteristics of them at their best. These aren't skills, these are qualities, characteristics. Most people go, 20? <laughs> I might be able to do five, but 20. I want to kind of overwhelm the brain to the point where we're no longer questioning our worth. Are you intelligent? Are you a good listener? Are you compassionate? Or do you have a good sense of humor? Um, are you passionate? Are you uh, creative? Are, are you caring for people? What, what are the qualities and characteristics that define you at your best? 
If you have trouble coming up with 20, ask your friends, ask your family, ask the people who know and love you. But the idea is to come up with 20 qualities or characteristics of you at your best. Put them on a card or put them on your phone where you can kind of refer to them on a regular basis. Because now what we're doing is moving from trying to stop the anxiety to begin to access a part of the brain where our clarity, confidence, and creativity actually reside. What I call the top of the mind, this upper 80% of the brain, the neocortex. And this is where these qualities reside. So when we can start writing down the best of who we are, we are by definition accessing this, this part of the brain. We're not trying to ignore the uh, anxiety or trying to even stop the anxiety. Because frankly, making a change at this point really isn't about what we're stopping, it's about what we're starting. We are starting to recognize that, yeah, okay, we feel anxious, and at the same time, we have these qualities and characteristics that we can be proud of, that we would recommend to someone we love. When we are being this way, we are someone we can be proud of. And that's a really important component because it begins to access an upper 80% of the brain. It starts triggering serotonin, uh, endorphins, oxytocin, dopamine, all the chemicals that help us feel better and think clearer versus the adrenaline, noradrenaline, and the cortisol that throw us into that lower part of the brain. So what we've done, remember we've acknowledged the pain of anxiety, we've separated out who we are from that pain. So there's a situation that happened that triggered the anxiety or just some thought or some old memory that triggered the anxiety. That is not who we are, that's just the old brain being triggered. One of the things we want to do is get really clear about who we are, especially when we're coming from this upper 80% of the brain, give anxiety a uh, meaning, it's a trigger, it's a, it's a signal that something needs to change. And step five is beginning to imagine bringing these qualities to life. Who am I when I'm being a good listener? Who am I when I have a great sense of humor? Who am I when I'm being intelligent and a quick learner? Who am I when I am being passionate or compassionate? What's my tone of voice like? What's my body language like? Have, can I remember being that way? Well, of course. So what we want to do is start imagining, okay, who I am when I'm coming from this upper 80% of the brain and triggering the kind of chemicals that allow me to bring my best to life. Now we want to imagine bringing that into whatever we're doing next. Uh, what are we doing this afternoon? What are we doing tonight? What are we doing tomorrow? We want to make life, kind of turn life from the problem to the practice field. Well, we start practicing bringing these qualities to life going into situations clear about what I call our highest purpose, these qualities or characteristics we've defined as us at our best. Anything we practice, we get good at because when we are practicing, we're actually rewiring the brain. You've heard the phrase neuroplasticity. It means the brain is always rewiring itself. As we create this list of 20 qualities or characteristics and then actively imagine bringing those to life, go into situations with our highest purpose to bring these qualities and characteristics to life, we are automatically redefining who we are, coming from this clear, confident, creative part of the brain, triggering endorphins and serotonin versus adrenaline, noradrenaline, and cortisol, and the process of creating our life becomes more something we're in control of, more something we can affect. So the idea is to identify anxiety as real, rec separate it from who you are, give it meaning, give it a signal, let you kind of get clear about what it is, create a list of the quali 20 qualities or characteristic of you at your best, and then practice bringing those to life. What I'm told is this particular process is really effective, and I know why now, because it actually has people shifting from the anxious brain to the clear, confident, creative brain. This is what I get to do. I get to go around the world teaching people my system called Life from the Top of the Mind. I have a book about it. If you want me to come to your organization, your church, your school, and help people kind of get a sense of how to have more influence, more control over how they're thinking and how they're feeling and who they are, all you got to do is go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com, hit the contact button, let me know what you're interested in. love to talk with you about that. In the meantime, I hope you're liking these videos. If so, hit the like button. You know, I put these on YouTube and Facebook and Pinterest and iTunes and Twitter and all the good stuff. So feel free to follow me on any of those, subscribe to any of those. I do have a uh, 
thing that I send out every week, and it's people who are on my email list, a quote list, where each week I send out one of my favorite quotes along with two or three paragraphs about how to apply that quote to life, and also a short video like the one you're seeing now. If you'd like to receive that, it's free. Again, go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com. Hit the subscribe button, put your name and email address in. You'll get one every week. Hope you're enjoying this. I'm having a great time bringing them to you in the meantime. Here's to you, bringing more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.